James, James chapter 1. James chapter 1 of the New Testament. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, now this is speaking unto Christians, says my brethren, so it's speaking to Christians. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. That means different temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work of patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth. And the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed or happy is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You see, another verse that would say that would be something like this, for the wages of sin is death. That's what we deserve. We get the wages of sin, which is death. Now, I'm sure that you've been to uh, people's funerals before, loved ones or friends, and uh, we must realize that we're all marked for death. In other words, 10 out of 10 people die. And the reason we do die is actually because of sin. Now, I'm not saying those who are dead are really bad sinners, but the point is this, you and I all need forgiveness for our sins. And that forgiveness is only possible through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and His precious blood that was shed that day upon that cross. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and He was buried, and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Yes, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, that's a strong desire, and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You see, we've got to be born again. And again, this is actually written to Christians. This is written to believers. And we've got to become children of God. You say, well, we're all God's children. No, we're not. We need to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we need to understand we are in great need of salvation. We need forgiveness for our sins. That forgiveness is only possible through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. The once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross that you and I could be saved. You see, you and I are heading down to hell because of our sins that have not been forgiven, if that's your case today. 
When have your sins been forgiven? Do you have peace with God? That's what it's all about. Having peace with God, having forgiveness for your sins. Without that forgiveness, we're heading down to hell, my friend. And God does not want you to go down to hell. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then you become a child of God. The Bible says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So we've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, my friend. If we don't, we will die and go down to hell, and that's not God's will for you. As I said, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. You see, the word of God is quick and powerful, is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder, of, uh, asunder of spirit and soul. It is a deserter of the joints and marrow and, and thoughts of the heart. So we need to understand that God knows absolutely everything about us. We cannot hide anything from God, my friend. He knows absolutely everything about us. Even the things that we do in the dark, those dodgy sites you're clicking on or whatever they might be on the internet, God knows all those things. And the word of God says this, God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. You see, the Father judgeth no man, but hath uh, committed all judgment unto the Son. The Son is the Lord Jesus Christ. And He, my friend, can be your Saviour. But... If you do not receive him as your saviour, he will be your judge. Now you must make that decision. Would you rather have a saviour or a judge? Your eternal destiny, my friend, depends on what you do with Jesus Christ. He'll either be your saviour or he'll have to be your judge. What will it be for you? Salvation or damnation? God wants us to be in heaven. But the only way we can be there is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And again, this is written unto Christians. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deeds, or in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Uh, James chapter 2. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons? For if there come uh, unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have 
respect to him that uh, wear the gay clothing, that means uh, bright clothing, uh, and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place, in other words, he's got expensive clothing on, and say to the poor, stand thou here or sit here under my footstool, are ye not then partial in yourselves and become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? If ye fulfil the royal law according to the scripture, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. You know, we might think we're fairly good living people, and maybe we are, but there's no one on earth that can ever get to heaven by living a good life. You and I have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, we don't measure up to the holy standard of God Almighty in heaven. We need to understand this because there are many people who think that if my good works will outweigh my bad works, well, then God will let me into heaven. It doesn't work that way, my friend. It had to be the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. He had to sacrifice himself upon the cross and become sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So even if we're good living people, and maybe we are, we can never ever get, that can never ever get us to heaven. We've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. We'll never ever be in heaven without the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, a, um, there was a saying a long time ago, a fair few years ago, it said, don't leave earth without Jesus Christ. And I would echo that. That is so true. You need to not leave planet Earth without the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. Why? Because He'll be your judge. If you die without Christ as your Saviour, He will be your judge. Now why do that? Why die without forgiveness for your sins? When there's absolutely no need, my friend, your soul can be saved today right where you are by repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind, Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. In other words, do not murder. Commit murder. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and hath not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of dainty food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You see, our works prove that we have that faith. Works have got absolutely nothing to do with salvation. You cannot get to heaven by doing good works. Otherwise, the Lord Jesus Christ wasted his time coming down from heaven and being crucified upon the cross, but that's definitely not the case. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried. 
praise God the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. What is your soul saved? Are you on your way to heaven? Or is it on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? There's no need to go down to hell, my friend, when there's heaven. There's a heaven to be gained and an earth to be shunned. We need to get on the right road. We need to enter through the door. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. I wonder, are you saved today? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the broad road which leads unto destruction? Thou believest there is one God, thou doest will, the demons also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect or complete? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how the, uh, that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So the works will prove that we do have faith. The works are a, are a normal outcome of our faith. And so when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will do good works as a result of that. Not to get to heaven, but as a result of our salvation. Those good works will be reproduced in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. who gives us the power to live the Christian life. See, you and I can never ever live the Christian life. It's only the, by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's possible. And God wants you, my friend, to be saved today. God wants you to receive forgiveness for your sins. And how's that possible? Through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and by His precious blood that was shed for us freely upon the cross of Calvary. You see, Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and He was buried. But praise God, the third day He rose again, according to the Scriptures. Lord, is your soul saved as you listen to this message today? Are you ready to meet God? If you were to die right now, where would you be? Would you be in heaven through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? Or would you be down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ who desires today to be your Saviour? Going on now to James chapter 3. James chapter 3, my brethren, again this is written unto Christians. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that uh, they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great or so big, and are driven of fierce winds. Yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed, or the governor wants them to go, wants the boat to go, or ship to go. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is, it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of the birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison, 
therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith can curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can uh, no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but it is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. James chapter 4. From whence or from where come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ask ye, and uh, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts, or upon your strong desires. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? See, this is talk, speaking unto believers. So the friendship of the world is enmity with God. It makes us an enemy of God if we're friends with the world. Uh, whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He will run away from you. And again, this isn't written to you if you're not saved. This is written to save people. To people who are believers in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you, or near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one the law uh, giver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into a, such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not to him, it is sin. What are other things in, in our lives that we would know to do good, and yet we don't do them? That is even sin in itself. 
You see, even living without God is sin. God created us to have fellowship with himself, to glorify him and to worship him. That's not what we're doing when we're sinning, my friend. We need to have forgiveness for our sins. But the only way of forgiveness is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who died upon the cross that your soul be saved, my friend. God wants us to be in heaven, but we cannot be in heaven apart from faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I wonder, is your soul saved as you listen to this message today? If you were to die right now, where would you be? Would you be in heaven? The only way you can be in heaven is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, moving on now to uh, James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Now, uh, go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl, for your misery shall, that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth -eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the labourers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have uh, lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and the the early and latter rain. Also uh, patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. In other words, is drawing near. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay nay. In other words, let your yes be yes, and your no, no. Lest, any, lest ye fall into condemnation, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one, uh, one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now you might say, well, how can we be righteous? We can only be righteous in the sight of the Lord if we've been given the righteousness of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God who came down from heaven to die upon the cross for you and for me and uh, die on that cross and be crucified for you and for me. Why? Because you and I are the sinners. The Lord Jesus Christ is not a sinner. He knew no sin, did no sin, and in him is no sin. Praise the Lord for the perfection found in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, 
slain before the foundation of the world. Remember the words of John the Baptist, he could look at the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I want to have your sins been taken away. Have your sins been washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual uh, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, again this is speaking unto Christians. If any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. See, you and I have sins. If we're not saved, we have sins that need to be forgiven. Without the forgiveness of God, we are heading down to hell, that terrible place called hell, where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. God does not want you to go there, my friend. He's not willing that any should perish, but that, that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then place your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever. And eternally too late. Repentance toward God, that is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. If today you would do that, this would be the best day of your entire life. You would remember this day for your entire endure. Uh, for the entire time of your life on earth, because it would be the best day of your life to become a child of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Have you been born again? Are you a child of God? The Bible says we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to receive forgiveness for your sins, a home in heaven, everlasting life, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's made peace through the blood of his cross, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. What will it be for you, heaven or hell, at the moment of death? It's all determined by what you do with our Lord and the Saviour, Jesus Christ. Make a wise choice today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.